At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's zero sugar. All do. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Someone else who wants to move the needle in the sneaker game is Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is talking about building his very own sneaker brand. We know he's a big sneaker head, but I don't know how much of that will move the needle of his brand. Do you think he could get people who are not into sneakers into sneakers? Oh, yeah. I think, I mean, it's the not into the sneakers. The, thing. the Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Last night, I won a year of free Whataburger at a Whataburger influencer event. Yes, I did. We won. We won. Let's go. Woo! Whataburger. One Let's year. Oh. Okay, CJ just broke his back, but. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Bismack Biombo, a 6'8", 255 uh, pounder. He'll get you the rebounds, he'll do the dirty work, he'll block shots. He's not worried about scoring the basketball. They have enough. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Number uh, 25, Kansas State at number seven, Texas. This is a stay away game for me. Would you guys pick this I one? I would completely stay away from this game. Totally stay away from it. I'm, I'm, C I'm CJ's over. on it. I'm, I want it, and I want the under. You're talking about two Ooh, teams like in it, the Big like 12 it. who are two of the three best defensive teams in the conference. The Odds Couple with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, John Roser, and CJ Hurt live Thursdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. You know when a melty Sonic grilled cheese sounds so good, but so does a juicy burger topped with savory bacon and creamy peppercorn ranch. But then again, so does perfectly crispy tots or fries. And you couldn't possibly choose because brain no work too good when tummy empty. Yeah, us too. Sonic bacon peppercorn ranch grilled cheeseburger with tots or fries for just $3.99. Tax not included, add-ons cost extra. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Live. 
live from downtown Memphis, this is The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. GrindCityMedia.com. It's Chris Varnish. Show! Whoa! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It is a Friday, November 10th, 2023 edition of the show. Today on the show, Grizzlies going to be back in action. They got a home game tonight against the Utah Jazz, part of the in-season tournament. We'll get you ready for that. In addition to that, we'll get you ready for the... Big college football and NFL weekends ahead. Hollywood movie star Terrence Howard is in Memphis, and he's going to join us in studio. Let's do it. Turn it up. having a good day all right uh we got a lot of stuff to get to on the show today as i mentioned uh grizzly's going to be in action different court than we have ever seen before at fedex forum as part of the in-season tournament uh the one and seven grizzlies are taking on the two and seven utah jazz and hopefully uh the grizzlies can get a win and avenge the early season loss they have already taken to the Utah Jazz. Utah is 0-5 uh, away from their home arena uh, before the Grizzlies then head back out on the road in what may not be a very easy road trip. Um, Super excited. Terrence Howard is in town and going to be coming in. I'll tell you about that here in a moment. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Bandit, Senior Sack, a.k.a. John the Back Bowl, John the Bearcat, a.k.a. the Grim Roser, John Asparagus, Johnny Nick Carb, a.k.a. John Lance. He's John Hustle. He's Yogi Roser. Yeah, man. Um, Not the only basketball game that is going on tonight is the Memphis Grizzlies versus the Utah Jazz. In fact. Yeah, the hustle opened the season. And I, I, uh, after the last two days, um, I went and did uh, Namaste last night, 6 to 7 o'clock. Dude, I got home. I cooked dinner. I am pretty sure I was in bed, like in my bed by 9 o'clock last night. And I think, I, I mean, I freaking slept and it feels great ready to go great. for tonight and I, tomorrow night i was recording a podcast at that yes. very hour. great podcast Thank by you. the way a compl- i had several thoughts on that May- we'll get to them a little bit later and in fact we will have time so i'll tell you like typically on fridays like brian edwards on vinnie verno's on but like we had to we had to shuffle things around a lot because look hey the hollywood actors willing to come into your studio yes you do what it takes to make this happen and so it was crazy yesterday i was scrolling through social media i can't remember where it was but i was scrolling through and i saw this thing where uh terrence howard was in town um doing an event in memphis he's in a new movie called uh showdown at the grand that uh was premiering here 
And guess who, guess who else was in the movie with him? Guess who else? It did, now, you remember... Well, you had, what, there, there are so many actors and actresses. No, what, this you, one. you get to give me a hint here. Uh, all right. So this actually falls in line with yesterday's fill in the blank about like somebody you wish would come back. So somebody you haven't seen in forever. But if you saw that they were in something, you'd be like, no way! Chris O'Donnell. Better. Christian Slater. <laughs> <laughs> he was better, actually in that better than Mr. Robot. Slater. He was actually in Mr. Robot, but that's a good one. Will Smith? <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. Oh, shout out Dolph yeah. Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren's yeah, in there. Drago. Sure enough. So anyways, uh, Terrence Howard's going to be in town. And so our beloved Jenna, who works on the show with us, I text Jenna and I said, hey, I just saw Terrence Howard's in town. See if we can get him on the show. And, like, within a half an hour, she's like, Terrence Howard will be in at 1230. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jenna, do your thing then. Yeah. There no. You go. That's one of the... I got How home. About it? I got home from yoga to all of those texts. Like, I, yeah, super I was excited. Like, yeah, well, okay. I'm glad somebody can help me. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> but Jenna got uh, cleaning you know, my mind. Yeah, she she made it happen, and so Terrence Howard, who of course uh, played DJ in our buddy Craig Brewer's uh, first huge future uh, feature film. Hustle and Flow uh, that, happens to be in it, town. He's going to be joining us. Yeah, that's also that's Lucius Lyon. From the His? TV series Empire. Wow. Freaking great show. Primetime uh, soap opera. Uh, he was also in Iron Man. Yes. He's, I mean, he, Crash. He's been in 2004, Crash was a. Crash won. Uh, it was nominated for a bunch of stuff. It won Best Picture. Yeah. It was controversial. Yeah. But. Uh, and he was win. in that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously got nominated for Hustle and Flow as for Best Actor, yeah. Yeah, I think he got beat by the guy that played uh, Capote, Philip Seymour Hoffman, didn't yeah. he? I think that was the. I think that was the same year. Rip. I think. I think I remember that. Uh, anyways, look, Terrence Howard is going to be joining us. Uh, super cool, and I and I do wonder how if he has a level of awareness of how big of a deal. You know, and how, and how much that lives on here, uh, even at our arena. So I saw the court uh, that they have laid yeah. out for tonight. They'll be wearing those city jerseys uh, for the first time tonight, and they will be playing on this in-season tournament court that they've got set up here. And it is, I got to be honest with you, um, you know, I've seen a lot of them, and, and I know that there was a level of uh, discontent with NBA fans saying, like, hey, that's really distracting, or what the hell's up with the court. It's certainly, look, if, 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 the, if the goal was to garner a tremendous amount of uh, talk, they did that. But there were people that, like, found the courts either uh, – off-putting or distracting or too whatever. Too loud. A lot of them are too loud. Yeah, maybe too loud, like the, the different colors and whatever. But I, I'll tell you this. Like, they went with the gray for this Grizzlies one. It looks really cool. No, I thought... Like, it actually yes. looks cool. No, it looks cool. And I thought... um because I know the City Edition jerseys have been a hot topic among Grizzlies fans. A lot of them are not big fans of them. I think the City Edition jerseys are going to look awesome on the gray court. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the jerseys well, are going to look Mr. Positive. Yeah, I think the jerseys are going to look great on the court. So, yeah, I'm cool with it. And this is how they do it all. This is, it. So we're showing look. this video of how they're redoing the court. So evidently, I just saw... Uh, Shout out to the people that have to do this because we think we're in the arena late on yep. game nights. But these people are there when they have to change it over from Tigers to Grizzlies or Grizzlies to Tigers. Like, they are there forever. Court looks really cool. And, uh, yeah, I think, the, I think the court looks really cool. And glad ours worked out well uh, because in Dallas, they tried to put down their court and they're actually just going to play on their regular home court oh. because of – uh, what was said to be uh, it's or the report is there's a manufacturing issue or something like I don't know maybe they left out some of the pieces or I don't know, I don't know. Is there like but a big they're hole like, in the court or yeah, something yeah like they're having to use their regular court tonight it was supposed to be their big unveil of their court okay. like, that's part of this whole in season tournament thing is that everybody's got a cool new court Dallas it didn't work it appears most teams just went with a blue court 
Well, there's reds. Yeah, there's some reds. Which there are reds. reds, and I mean, uh, just red and blue. They're very patriotic. Yeah, well, there's gonna be. A, I think we're probably gonna see a bunch of different ones uh, tonight, and so that is going on. There's a big college football weekend, and we'll go through some of the games that matter most uh, within that, and then uh, we've got another NFL weekend straight ahead. All right, we're gonna take a quick early break because I am told. The great Terrence Howard is here, so we're going to get him set up, and we'll be right back on the other side. Chris Farnan, show! It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Bismack Biombo, a 6'8", 255-pounder. Uh, He'll get you the rebounds. He'll do the dirty work. He'll block shots. He's not worried about scoring the basketball. They have enough. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Today, it is all about the sixth man of the year. Brogdon is the favorite by far. Yeah, I saw that. By far. How is he not starting on the Trailblazers, though? Like, I, I Maybe mean, by the time this comes out, he will be. He might be the sixth man on a good team by the time this comes out, too. Oh. Not on a good team. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Who could win down five rotation players? Literally no one. M maybe, like, a team. Well, literally no one and maybe 18, but they'll, they'll contradict each other. Pick that in. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. This helmet's like <laughs> squeezing my head really tight. I can barely get get a train of thought going right now. I understand it's um, fine. I'm not taking it off. I don't want you to. The entire show. Uh, good. The Gary Parrish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Bismack Biombo, a 6'8", 255-pounder. Uh, He'll get you the rebounds. He'll do the dirty work. He'll block shots. He's not worried about scoring the basketball. They have enough. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. Microphone one, two, one, two. Pack the whole place out. Watch what I do. I've been all around the world. Watch me make these moves. And I did it my way. Watch me break these rules. Yeah, I'm coming now. Get up out of my way. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon show. And oh my goodness, I can't believe he is in studio. You have seen him in Hustle and Flow many years ago. You've seen him in Iron Man. You've seen him in Empire. He is Hollywood star Terrence Howard in Memphis. Thanks for coming in, man. Yo, thank you for having me here, man. 
I'm sorry that it was the last minute. I wish we had planned it a little bit so we could have had some time to chop it up. We only got to talk a few minutes, but I like how you do your thing, man. You got good spirits, man. Thanks, man. So, first of all, why were you in Memphis? I'm scrolling through social media yesterday, and I called Jenna, and I said, hold on now. I said, Terrence Howard is in studio. I said, yeah. all right, he's in town. I said, you got to get him to come in with us. And sure enough, was able to make it happen, but there was a movie premiere for you. Yeah, but I appreciate the fact that you wanted me in here yeah, and man. asked about that. That means everything, and that's what Memphis is about. Most Memphians will reach out to you. It's like DJ saying to Skinny, come back home, Skinny, Skinny, where you at? That, that meant a lot. But I came here in an attempt. Um, Lynn Sittler, I call her Auntie Lynn. She is the film commissioner for uh, the Memphis um, Film Foundation. She's, she is putting together a, a pot or a fund so that the young men and women within the community can still try and achieve their dreams and have a place where they can come together and have funds where they can buy equipment to shoot their own little shorts and be able to tell their stories and, and, and contribute to the narrative and change the pejorative that's being used as the most dangerous, violent people. They should be violent for a reason. They should be dangerous in the sense of um, the innovation coming out of it with their ability to question, the critical thinking. That's why they should be called dangerous, but that need to come together in order to do that. So the film is about saving your own movie theater. And if you remember, the movie theater has, from antiquity, been the piazza, the town square. You go back a couple more, 100,000, uh, 1,000 years, 2,000 years, it used to be a fire pit where everybody, it was a communal fire where oral traditions and stories were told. You pop up another 2,000 years in, in, uh, across the annals of time, and now you have Shakespeare being taught. Why? Because people needed etiquette. We learned etiquette from listening to Shakespeare or watching Shakespeare throughout the mid-century, and you knew how to behave. We don't have that anymore because we've been disconnected from the um, theater, which is the center of our very being, the, the main chakra it was, is being destroyed. Our home tree is being destroyed, and we're standing by and letting it happen. You know, where are you going to fall in love at? Where are you going to make out at for the first time? So that's what I'm here for, to encourage the youth and the older youth to get back home. The theater is where it began for all of us. We should have town meetings there. They should have um, any kind of convention, any kind of uh, graduation. Why aren't we reaching out to the theater and booking those places? Why aren't we doing plays? Why aren't we doing lessons? Why aren't we edifying and growing together? You know, let's, let's close our borders in a sense. Let's build within. We have enough talent in this city to make 20 movies and have enough places where it can be seen and enough innovators to do something about it. So that's what I'm here for. It's like what y'all did to me and waking up DJ, you know, whoop that trick. You know, you've got to be the trick you're whipping. You got to whip that little, there's a threshold guardian out there for everybody. No matter what you're trying to accomplish, there's going to be something there. And that guardian is you saying, are you worthy? You got to whoop that trick, whatever you got to do, and, and be the next best person so that when they see you, they live by your example. And you're never a hypocrite. It's just by what you do. So that's what I'm here for. It's an amazing answer. How'd you get that role? Uh, which one? You talked about you yeah. talked about how much it meant to you, and you talk uh, about like, and, and yeah, and you have this relationship. That you will have this never-ending relationship with the city because yeah. of that role. You know how I got that role? Stephanie Elaine was the producer of that movie. She was doing a movie called Biker Boys at Lawrence Fishburne. Um, uh, dang it, <laughs> uh, Derek Luke. Um, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people. Jaiman Hansu, really big budget, big, lots of people. There was a day in which I was doing, I had to come and do a, a, a fitting, wardrobe fitting. And that morning, I'm staying at the Chateau Marmont. Stephanie Elaine has put me in the Chateau Marmont. 
I only have Chateau Marmont is the same place Jim Belushi died at. You know, J James Belushi died mm -hmm. at. Um, Jim, I hope you're still out there. I hope that I'm just, <laughs> I didn't just take that back, Jim. You ain't dead. Um, but it's a beautiful, historic place in Hollywood. And I'm going to get breakfast at this place right on Sunset. Um, and I see these four models. And they're eating. And I'm by myself, and I've got a convertible. And we, we start talking, and they're fun. They remind me of people I know. So I'm like, hey, um, I'm headed to a... To a as a, a, a wardrobe fitting for this movie. I said, it would be really great if you guys hopped in the car with me, ride over there with me <laughs> while you're driving. I want you all to, when we get there, we get out the car, everybody kiss me on the cheek, and then y'all go and have fun on the set and meet everybody, and I'll go and do my stuff, and when I come back, I'm gonna put my hand up, and, and I'm gonna do like this, and you, you guys on. see me, and then you come and hop back in the car and we leave. So we have this plan. I'm just doing it to mess with everybody. Yeah. I'm just trying to mess with everybody. So the girls, they had a good spirit. They were exotic, beautiful, beautiful women. And so we come back, we do it, and everybody on set saw how I behaved with the women. And Stephanie Elaine, I think she called Craig and said, hey, I think, and it was just me doing a joke. I was just playing a joke. And she said, Hey, I, I know you need a pimp in a movie. Yeah, yeah, I know you need a pimp in a movie. But it turned out that it was the best experience because those girls, they were staying at the Standard, and they were doing you know calls and all of that. I had four bedrooms at the Chateau Marmont. I was there for a month. They came and stayed with me for the month. Those four women. What the? They, we, we bought, what is going we bought on? easels. We what? bought easels. We painted. We, we talked, we were just, it was like a family. We were, there was nothing going on. It was just, we were people. It was the first time we were just people, just. It this was is really incredibly cool. strange. It was really, really, it was, it was the, one of the best experiences of my entire adult life, you know? And, but that's how I got Hustle and Flow. So the, the producer calls Craig. He says, okay, so now you're with Craig and now I know you guys have been friends ever since the movie. Yeah, but I didn't even want to do the movie. I didn't want to play a pimp. I was a Jehovah's Witness at the time. Mm. That's why I didn't put my name on the, for like, like Three Six Mafia, they wrote, um, it's hard out here for a pimp. But I also contributed to that the same way with that I did with, um, with, Whoop that trick. With, yeah, with, uh, no, no. It Al. ain't over for me with Al, Cap with Al yep. Capizzi. But I didn't want to put my name, because I was a Jehovah's Witness and Bible mentality, I didn't want to have my name attached to three of the best guys, you know, Three Six Mafia. I didn't want it. I, I thought it would have a bad connotation. Uh. So I didn't put my name on it, even though these guys are really beautiful, sweet guys, all of them. You but know, at so the time, I didn't do you it. thought, yeah. I don't want to be I a part of I didn't want to do it. So I didn't want to do the movie, period. And he kept trying to get me to do it, kept trying to ask me to read it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm not, you know, and he was like, just, just, just read the script. And if you don't like it, you know, let me know. So I, he called me the day that I was supposed to have a conversation with him. And I was, it was six months after I was supposed to read the script. And I hadn't read it. And I'm just BSing him, walking through, and he says, and I said, so just which girl is he, which one is he, does he like sleeping with? And he was quiet for about 30 seconds. He said, you haven't read it. And I said, no. He said, do me a favor, hang up the phone, just read the first page, and if you hear a lie, throw it away and don't ever call me. If it's the truth, you know you call me. And I read that monologue. Turn the page, man ain't like a dog. That changed my life. And I, I was, I called him back after I read it and apologized. And I was like, when do we start? When you guys got done filming it, did you think it would be a success? Um, or did you think it would just be a small movie that is part of the Terrence Howard career? No, no, no. There was what we all contributed in that film, there was, there was magic. There was, you it was knew. palpable. There was something that was happening that was more 
than just a movie. It was, it was a cinematic, it was the birth, I think, of, of a cinematic classic, you know, that changed the hearts of people around the world. There was this 84-year-old billionaires that said to John Singleton, I had no, after she had watched the screen and she said, I had no idea that I had that much in common with a Memphis pimp, that struggle to be better than you are and to have to run game just to deal with the, the troubles out there. Nobody really want to run game. Nobody want to put a dog on their face. Is everybody scared? How, how'd you figure out how to be Memphis? Juicy J, Al Capone. Those brothers took me around for three weeks and corrected me. Where'd you go? Every turn. Oh, everywhere. 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 She said, I'm listening because I tried to say. When you understood, away. like, this is how, this is how yeah, these people like, live. No. This is how I have to act. This is what it's truly like to be the character that is yeah, DJ. Yeah, well, what I wanted to find out was why, where was the pain coming from in Memphis? What was that great pain that was everywhere? And it was that unspoken thing. April 4th, 1968. It was the loss of... You life. thought he admitted, admitted from there. That's it what you get. It never recovered. It was still feeling that and everybody it was down in themselves. And I think they recognized in DJ, you got to get up and do some of the best lines of that movie was in when I was talking, when DJ was talking to Key and he says, you know, sometimes you got to lie, you know, in order to get what you got to do. That's the reality. We learn how to lie by the age four. If you don't learn how to lie by age four, you are not developing properly. It feels like you and I both have a mutual friend in Craig Brewer, and it feels to me, just from talking to you, uh, even before we went on the air, your relationship with him is different than the typical actor-director relationship. No, it's forged by fire. You know, when we did Hustle and Flow, there was some chafing because Craig was very particular about what he wanted. You know, he wants your head turned this way. I didn't know he had the eye, his picture. He didn't give me a storyboard. So I didn't know where he was gonna have his next shot, the frame of it or anything. So I'm trying to do me but he's trying to do his story and we had to try and find a balance in between so that it wasn't micromanaging. But his vision, you couldn't mess with his vision with what he was creating. But so he makes the movie. That's a brilliant movie. The character of who this man is, you know, he's, he's Joab that's gonna go up with David and fight the, the Philistines even though they're outnumbered. He's, going, he's one of the mighty 30 men, the 30 mighty men that, that David, King David had. You know, that's how Craig is and it's the, the, the reason for it. When I did Empire, um, Empire had a logo. If you look up the logo for Empire, you'll see this silhouette of, of, of my face. Now, I was told when I got to set at Empire, when, they, when I got there, in February, no, in March, early March, late March, early April of 2014, I was told that that logo that was already there, that that was a composite of me and Hakeem. I was like, oh, great. You know, and it made sense. I weighed 260 at the time. You know, I thought I was supposed to be Suge Knight. That's what they told me the character Lucius Lyon was. So I was like, let me put on this weight. Let me do all this. So I don't, we didn't do a photo shoot, but they've got this beautiful silhouette. I was like, great, it looks great. Years later, as I start to thin out, I don't see Hakeem in that picture. And I keep asking, where did they get this picture from? Because I know it's me. Craig Brewer came to direct. And in 2018, he was like, oh, I know where that picture is from. I was like, where? He says, from Hustle and Flow. He's like, no, it ain't. He's like, yes, it is. He's like, no, it ain't. He said, yes, it is. He said, I'll show you the frame. I know that movie. And he sent me the frame, and when I went and asked Fox about it, the show that made billions of dollars around the world from the work we had given them, they had put that, that image on every piece of logo they sold, 
It was their, oh, every piece of merchandise they sold. When I asked them about it, they lost all of their records of the image, how it came about. He recognized it from a frame in from the frame, movie that you guys from a frame. But the big thing when I had what to go heck? when I had to go to jams because you couldn't go to court. You had to do everything through jams. Mm -hmm. You know, a mediator arbitration. Um, Craig showed up, and even though it could cost him the ability to ever work for for Disney, for Marvel, for Fox, he came up and said. When they were asking him, you know, is it a possibility that this came from there? He's like, no, it came from Hustle and Flow. I know my movement. It came from Hustle and Flow. No, it's not a composite of somebody else. I know my movie. Y'all took that from Hustle and Flow. This is DJ. This is DJ. Oh, you needed him. He showed up. Mm -hmm. Showed up and showed out. Despite losing the relationship with the biggest entertainment company in the world. That's a man. That's a friend. That's a G. Mm -hmm. That's somebody that, that walked the walk. That's who you want in your corner. So, what happened with it? Huh? Craig is... No, know. what happened with that? Oh, so it turns out... Did the they end up having to give no, you some royalties? Out, check <laughs> out this. The arbitrator <laughs> didn't know that it was binding. The uh, thought that uh, what he wrote was the award was binding. And he said even though the image was... Derived from Hustle and Flow, Fox owns it. End of story. Terrence doesn't get anything, and <laughs> he quoted things that shouldn't have, that we'd never stated. So we got an appeal. We had an appeal. So now we've just done the oral arguments, and Fox's argument for why we took the image, and even if we took it, if we took it, it's okay because he signed away, gave us broad rights, so we have access to anything he's ever done. There's no stipulation that it's only for this right here in character only. They're trying to say it's okay for them to take. Mm. And it's the whole thing that we're going to war with SAG about. SAG didn't come and help me when I went and talked to him. SAG waited nine months and was like, oh, we're sorry. It definitely is a right of publicity case, but oops, it looks like the Statue of Limitations is gone for you. We're oh, so sorry. boy. <laughs> they didn't send a letter to Fox, how dare you do this to, to somebody. They just wanted their money. So I'm not here to, you know, we could do better as a union. I want to start a new union. Mm -hmm. A thing called MyHolly.app, where all the entertainers can come together and not be limited by gatekeepers. We can get rid of the agents and the... <laughs> managers and the lawyers that make you sign conflict of interest waivers mm. because they represent the studio also and the conflict of interest waiver conflict of interest waiver says that even though i'm representing you we also represent the studio and if we have information that may be helpful to you and may be critical to your case we will not give it to you because of our relationship with the studios are you okay with that sign right here and give us five percent of everything you make that standard, there's nobody looking after us, so we've got to look after each other. What are your thoughts on being an actor um, and now seeing, like we were, we were talking actually yesterday, uh, the famous director David Fincher, right? I saw yeah. he's got a movie coming out today, and it's uh, premiering on, like, Netflix, I believe, right? Uh, the Killer or whatever. And now we're seeing lots of movies and lots of major stars being featured in things that, they just show up on Amazon Prime. They just show up on Netflix. They just show up, and they're never in a theater, exactly. right? And I know you talked about how important the theater is to you, but what do you make of what has happened with the industry and how it has evolved um, even since, you know, in these last 10, 15, 20 years? Well, there's always a transaction, a transition um, in any reaction or interaction that transaction and transition it used to be a middleman we call that a middleman a, a, a cushion mm -hmm. now depending on the product there's a lot of middlemen and how far and remote and exotic the product is there's a lot of middlemen well delivering information like one of the things our film talks about you thomas edison wasn't trying to 
make movies to entertain people when he invented the 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 the, 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 the his first thing to make movies with. He was trying to sell products. He was using it as an opportunity to sell products. And so he used the theater where everybody used to do plays, have the opera where they would have their meetings, they would have their graduations. He now made a deal, 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 built a relationship from the silent films that that became a big thing. So everybody now stopped dealing with the local artists and only wanted to deal with the big companies. So that's been the trend. So you cut 100 years into the future, we're back there again. Now there's a new medium. They want to get rid of the theaters completely because then now they don't have need any me middleman because they can go directly to the consumer at home right here and we can feed them enough stuff to where they can stay here because what we really want to do is show them these advertisements so they can click buy click buy but the problem is the theaters serve more than the purpose of just watching movies to be entertained with it was a place where we gathered it was a place where we were called to arms it was a place where it was the it was yeah, it was the So you resent thing. losing this. Oh, yeah, we're not going to lose it. I'm not letting it go. You let it go, then you become a cyborg kind of organism <laughs> without a heart anymore. Right. What do people bring up to you the most? You go walk through, say you, you walk through the Memphis airport or somewhere, or you walk you're around town. Do they bring up Empire? Do they bring up Hustle and Flow? Do they say, hey, aren't you the guy from Iron Man? What do they, what, when people recognize you, what do you feel like is their most common response? Well, it all depends. Some people, they see me and they're like, Lucius, Lucius. And I'm forever Lucius to those people. Some other people, they're like, they see DJ. They love DJ, you know. And there's other people, they see, they'll see Q, you know, from the best man. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I love it when people just the look in their eye, their, their eyes swell up and they say, I love you. I don't know why I love you. That's what I love to hear more than anything else. Because when you hear that, you can't help but give it right back mm -hmm. and multiply it. And then it's like, oh man, this isn't an enemy or stranger. This is a friend that I just didn't realize he was my friend. You know, smiling back. so. That, that's what I really like the most when I just do that. But people know me, I don't know, for a lot of movies, a lot of stuff. Nowadays, since I've invented a new form of flight called tangential flight, the linchpin, unlimited bonding. You never heard anything about it, have you? No. Yeah, can you imagine? An a Oscar, new way to an, fly? An Oscar-nominated actor invents a new form of flight that takes it from fixed-wing aircraft and four degrees of, of, of freedom to unlimited degrees of freedom. Tangential flight is the ability to fly around your own center of mass and have unlimited mid-air bonding. That means I have a super symmetrical system, but not just that. Four super symmetrical systems I've patented. You've never heard of that. How is that? How is that? Is it my fault? No. Okay. <laughs> I was just making sure. No. I was just making no, sure. It's, it's suppression. It's suppression. Because you know how I figured it out? What's one times one? One times one is one. To multiply means to do what? To make more, right? Yes. Increase in number? Yes. Multiply? Yes. How can one times one equaling one be part of the multiplication table? It fails to satisfy the term multiply. It doesn't multiply, does it? What's an action times an action? You got some weed. I'm, no, no, I'm asking you. <laughs> what Honestly, are we, what are I'm we asking you. Reason, what are we doing reason, here? <laughs> reason, reason, reason. I want you to reason. <laughs> I don't know. What's an action times an action? A reaction, right? Okay. Have you ever seen an action times an action without a reaction? Have you? No. Because every, because equanimity is the currency of the universe. There's always an action times an action, action having a reaction. So how can one times one equal one? How can A times B just be A? 
and not be. What happened to Constable? Terrence, Civility? these are late night conversations. These bro. are no. These <laughs> yeah, are, they are. This is the beginning of, of of our understanding. It should fit. What kind of calculator you got? What kind of phone you got? <laughs> iPhone? iPhone. Okay, go to your calculator. Whatever the new. <laughs> no, go to your okay. calculator. Go to your calculator. All right. <laughs> Good calculator. Go to calculator. Yeah, you I got do too. You got iPhone? What are we doing? I want both of y'all to do two separate things. I want to do the same thing to start with. Turn it to the side. Okay. All right, now I want you to both hit the number two. Did the whole calculator show up? Hit, hit number the, what? Hit the number two. Number two. two. Go to the square root. It is the second column from the left, third row. It'll have that square yeah. thing. All right, 1.4. 1.414213562373095. Yeah. Holy crap. Now I want you two to do two separate things now. <laughs> two separate things. I want you to multiply it by two, hit times two, equal, don't you do it. Okay. And I want you to hit X to the third. X to the third, it's going to be. Times third. three? No, X to the third. Oh, X. Oh, okay, I see it, I see it. X to the third. Yeah, I got you. All right, 1.1. One. No. You didn't hit X to the third. Yes, I did. If you hit X to the third. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. So I go did back that. again. Okay, you keep so now. Yours I, where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm two, good. Two. Square root. Square root. And hit X to the third. All right, 2.82. 2. 2.8284271217461.90. The same value you got. Yeah. By multiplying it by two. Yeah. And he just cubed it. Divide it by two again. Both of y'all. Divide, divide by two. Divide it by two. No, divide by two. <laughs> hit equal. <laughs> Now, cube it again. Hit X to the third. Yeah. You see that loop? Yeah. That's saying X cubed is equal to 2X, which is equal to X plus X. That's an unnatural equation. That's a mathematical fallacy. And that's the beginning of your math. That's how I invented tangential flight, because your math, someone programmed that lie in there and lied to you and you and everyone. And all your fundamentals are off. Well, That's certainly now. I mean, I don't even know what to think. You heard that I, don't I know what just you happened. heard that I said one times one equals I, I, two. Do you know what just Did you, <laughs> wait, you heard that I said both. Of I was bad at math. I was no, horrible at both it. Both of y'all had heard that I said one times one equal two, didn't you? You had heard it somewhere. Somebody that was yeah, uh, yeah, I heard it. I heard it. And then everybody said I was crazy. Yeah, they did say that. Well, am I crazy or is the calculator broke? I mean. Are, the, are those my only two options? What, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Or am I right? Or am I right? I don't know. Am I, don't, I right? I don't know. Enough. You just did the you did the I calculation. Mean, you need to. You some, just did okay, the Terrence, calculation. Terrence, Both of y'all did. Terrence, you look. I don't know what you thought you signed up for coming in here, but you need I know somebody smart. way smarter than us to have this debate. <laughs> no, we're talking about fundamentals. <laughs> we're talking about our basics. <laughs> if all our infrastructure is built off of a faulty foundation what's gonna to happen to your house it's gonna fall apart well I hope not. so why do you think our economy and our math and everything is collapsing now we've been it's all going to hell i can fix it That's what, <laughs> do it you try and there's wait till i show you okay <laughs> what, what did you say it was i'm gonna look this up Tan what linchpin tangential flight linchpin tangential T L Y N C H pin Wait till I show you. When did you start caring about this stuff? About a thousand lifetimes ago. Really? Like as a kid, this is stuff that you cared about? All I wanted to know is how everything worked mm -hmm. for this purpose. Wait till you see. I got to go, y'all. <laughs> I'm loving this. Last thing. We are... Uh, you know, there's actually a game tonight. And yes. during the playoffs, every Heal year. Heal the Hood. No, no, we're doing something here for the Heal the Hood. You'll be there. Yeah, Heal the Hood, and we're going to the game tonight. Perfect. During the playoffs, you see 18,000 people. I'm talking like old grannies. Whoop that trick. Yeah. How aware are you of that? When it I, happens and the Grizzlies are in the playoffs and it's on national TV and they're having to talk about how they're showing this crowd and there's 18,000 people all chanting along, Al swinging a towel, you know, in the face of the Golden State Warriors so and whatever. Strange. I had never heard about it personally because I, don't, I wasn't watching TV. I wasn't a big sports fan. I'm, like I said, I'm trying to live two lives. I'm always into my science, always in my lab. 
Um, and I got a call when I was doing the Best Man, the movie, mm -hmm. the, the show, and they wanted me to come down to the Grizzlies game at the playoff because they were doing, they were going to do whoop that trick. And then I, I'm like, really? And then I look up and I see all of this stuff since 2011. Yeah. They've been doing this? Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. This kind of impact from you that didn't little know. bitty thing? You didn't know. No, I didn't know. That it goes on at the games. They it, have I rally bet, towels with it on dude, there the I whole started, thing. I, I made $12,000 for doing Hustle and Flow. That's all I got for it. Do you make money now when it's no, on TV? because guess what? Guess what they did with the performance? This is how dirty the studios are. Paramount. Twelve grand. Twelve grand. I was doing making a minimum, but I sang all of those songs. So when you look up, if you go open up the 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 C DVD, and it says any of those songs, it's hard out here for a pimp. It says performed by DJ. Who owns DJ? Paramount. Even though Terrence Howard. It should have said performed by Terrence Howard. Oh, but it's, it doesn't. It, so guess who the well, let royalties me take a quick, go to? Uh, let me take a quick time out. Wouldn't that be your fault? Because you told us at the very beginning you didn't want your name on anything. Well, that Did it was, end up costing no, you no, a fortune? No, 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 no. That was, that, that was as far as, as writing, that, uh, the oh. writing credits. But as far as performance royalties, you don't get I, have, I haven't received one dollar. All of that have gone right back to Paramount. Right back to Paramount. They've known it. Wait, even when it's, if it's on HBO out, or something? Or I, every single time. Because it was on MTV a was, million times. Yes, every time it's been played, every time it's been sold, it's all gone back to them. So I've got, you know, it's like, it's crazy. They 12 will, grand? They will all rob you. That's the whole point of, of, of starting MyHolly.com, MyHolly.app. They, if they're doing it to me, a veteran actor, yeah. That was represented by CAA, who should have been looking after me. But everybody's got a, hmm. Uh, CAA, their problem was, guess what? They're packaging the show. So now they're incentivized to keep, the, keep my pay low because they're getting 30% or some huge back end on the back. Mm. So, and they're representing me. Are they going to act in my best interest or in their best interest? So again, the corruption... And we don't have anybody looking after that. That's yeah. where you come in. Yeah, that's where Holly. You're gonna comes have in. us flying to space, oh, wait fixing till I show math, you. and wait till I show doing you. the whole thing. And yeah. you'll be at the Did game. you see Big Hero Six? The movie Big Hero Six. Did anybody? Years hear? ago. Yeah, the Disney. Yes. movie? you're talking about the animated movie. And you see, remember the Microbots? Okay. Lynchpin is the real life Microbots. <laughs> no BS. No BS. I can look this up online. You can look it I'm up online. Look it up. I'm about to show you right now. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. <laughs> and y'all can, you can show them afterwards. I'm, I got to get out. Yep. Thanks, man. Loving this, man. Thanks I love the reality of another big talk. Ro Roaster, how dumb do you feel? Amazing. Scale of one to ten. Well, come on. Yeah, they, they, yes, I, there, there are some of this I just don't understand. Well, no. If, okay, anybody got questions. <laughs> y'all got questions. Go to tcotlc.com. Tango Charlie Oscar, Tango Lever, Tango Lever Charlie dot com. That's my book. One times one equals two. Inside of it, I explain all of the things that we've been missing from humanity. Anytime you see a green clover, tap on it, and it will take you to supplemental information and everything you've ever wanted to know that they haven't taught you is in those 324 pages. If I'm lying, like Craig told me. Delete it, throw it out. But if I'm telling the truth, share it. TCOTLC.com. Terrence Howard, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you, baby. All right, bud. We'll be back after this. Chris Farnan, show. This is the de facto championship game in the West when you talk about Southern and Alcorn State. And it, it goes without saying when you look at the standings right there that the winner of this game uh, has the inside track. Uh, to make make that showdown against Florida A&M in the uh, SWAC championship game. Get all of your HBCU sports and culture news by tuning in to HBCU Huddle with CJ Hurt and Mike Wallace. New episodes drop every Thursday on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and Spotify. Today, it is all about the sixth man of the year. Brogdon is the favorite by far. Yeah, I saw that. 
by far. How is he not starting on the Trailblazers, though? Like, I, I Maybe mean, by the time this comes out, he will be. Well, he might be the sixth man on a good team by the time this comes out, too. Oh. Not on a good team. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Bismack Biombo, a 6'8", 255-pounder. Uh, He'll get you the rebounds. He'll do the dirty work. He'll block shots. He's not worried about scoring the basketball. They have enough. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. I can't wait. I mean, you know, we're going to have a new roster. The Memphis Grizzlies welcome their newest Grizzly, Marcus Smart. Coming to Memphis, that blue collar, is gonna be great. So to be able to go out there and, and you know, try to bring a championship to that city, you know, it's an honor. We're all hungry. Let's go, big dog. Keep fighting, keep fighting. Ah! We're super excited to be in front of the best fans in the league and hopefully deliver a memorable season. At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's zero sugar. All do. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments, live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Someone else who wants to move the needle in the sneaker game is Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is talking about building his very own sneaker brand. We know he's a big sneakerhead, but I don't know how much of that will move the needle of his brand. Do you think he could get people who are not into sneakers into sneakers? Oh, yeah. I think, I mean, it's the not into the sneakers. The, thing. the Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Last night, I won a year of free Whataburger at a Whataburger influencer event. Yes, I did. We won. We won. Let's go. Woo. Whataburger. One Let's year. Oh. Okay, CJ just broke his back. but. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Bismack Biombo, a 6'8", 255-pounder. Uh, He'll get you the rebounds. He'll do the dirty work. He'll block shots. He's not worried about scoring the basketball. They have enough. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, 
but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class exclusive industry first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, yeah. back to your host, Chris hey. Vernon. At the jungle, man, we at the mud. Black. Keep it moving, man, we on the run. Hey. All right, yeah. <laughs> you've got to stop. What did I do? You've got to stop. What did I do? You can tell. I'm like, what? What is happening right now? What's happening? And what's that? I just, he when when Terrence hit me with one time. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got to explain it. Then we're hitting buttons on the uh, on our calculators. Yeah. And then the brother. What are we? Terrence, you you're a live wire man. I don't know what to say. I didn't know. I didn't know what. I, next thing I know, I'm watching these drones. I don't even know what's going on. He's changing the world. They look cool. Look it up. I, we looked it up. I've got we the website. I wrote the website down. I've got it written down. We looked it up. It's unbelievable. <laughs> It is on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to send it to him. Hold on. I'm going to Oh, there are all these YouTube videos. Lynchpin technology illustrations. Terrence proves gravity is an effect, not a cause. Bro. 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 <laughs> oh, my gosh. I... I I'm not smart enough for this. My brain can't think like this. And my brain does not work like this. Brother, I neither. Yeah, my brain cannot go to these places. Um, Tangential flight. Atmospheric you, flows and currents you, similar you, to... He, look, he, 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 we, watched it, we, watched it on, uh, we watched it on YouTube. Demo real linchpin tangential flight corp. We were watching the video. showing us the video. This is what it does. And he's explaining hydrogen to us. And I was like, what is happening? Yeah. I, I'm i trying to read this website here. And you don't know what's going on. I don't know. You're what too any stupid th for this. I don't know what any of these words mean. We're just sports guys. Non-Euclidean non chiral asymmetries Bro. of force and motion. I don't know what. Look, I love Terrence Howard. Terrence mean. Howard is operating at a. Infinitely different level than we are. Yes, I am basic as hell. I am way too basic for I'm this. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I'm too ba I'm just too basic. My brain does not work like this. Like I'm thinking about Lander Center chicken tenders tonight. <laughs> like that's what, and cookies, and, and and hot wings. That's what I'm thinking about. He had a cane with the duck on it. Yeah. And From he the said, and, and he, he said he's changing it. Yeah, he's not, it's not the Duck Master anymore. The Duke of Ducks. The Duke of Ducks. He said he's the Duke of Ducks. <laughs> I didn't realize that was the Duck Master cane at first. Like when he came in, I was like, is this dude really carrying around a, like a pimp cane? I was like, that's freaking awesome. I just need to carry around a cane everywhere. Um, that will go down and show lore. That is one for the books. Like, no. On. You, don't, you don't say. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> there was a point in it where I looked over at you like. <laughs> um, I don't think we knew. Uh, we didn't know what had happened. I got lost more than we didn't a know what, times. At, one, at one point, we were talking about hustle and flow. And the next thing I know. We're talking about how yeah. things fly. Yeah. 
He said to me, he said, he said, I, when I tell you this, Roser, yeah, this man looked at me, he's like, hey. <laughs> you can't say this when I'm drinking something, Sorry. Mike. You gotta let me finish the drink. Did you see the last conversation we had? So, okay, the other thing is this. Uh, there's two, uh, we're running on two tracks here. One, on one, I'm like, a little confused, a little, uh, like, uh, fascinated, and then a little, like, what's going on, you know, like, what's happening here? Yeah. Kind of, I guess that falls into confused. And then the other track is, there's, there's a guy with the cameras taking pictures and videos and whatnot. And, and I said, uh, what's that for? And he said, you know, I'm documenting everything Mr. Howard does. Right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You yeah. Know, when you're doing something like this, you got to evangelize to the world, you know, and whatever, like, you know, about what you're doing, right? Because, and so, and the guy's like, look, I didn't, he's like, I thought it was kind of kooky too. He's like, but I've seen all the stuff and whatever. And I was like, and he's like, so he's documenting all this stuff and everything he goes around town and like everywhere he goes, right? Yeah. And he says, you know, you need, and Terrence Howard, like, he looks at me. You didn't see this. He looks at me and he goes, when you're going around and we're going from place to place, he's like, this needs to be documented when I'm telling everybody about this. I'm gonna change the world. And I was like, <laughs> All right. He's like, and he looks at me, and I'm talking like, I'm going to change the world. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you don't know who my daddy is. And I was like, who, who is it? He's like, you're not ready for that. And he just left. <laughs> what? Again? What is that? Why am I? What's going on? And then the, there was a part of me that was like, is he screwing with us? But then I'm like, he's not. No. Like, is this a, like, he's got the film crew. Is this a bit? And this is going to be like, I. I don't want to, I, I still, I'll never know what, what just happened. That thing went to a place that I would never have taken it. And it certainly did not understand. Like I just, I, that's not my wavelength. No, we're, we're, we're on different planes. We brother. are. And he was dead ass serious. I'm telling you, this guy looked right at me. He goes, I am going to change the world. And no one. He said, what did he say? He's got, I think he said he had around 90 patents. He's like, approved. Approved. I was like, okay. We get him. I don't, I don't, know, what to, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I'm like, all right. Like, I mean, I, I guess if I was like, a, if I was like Josh Dobbs, I'd, like, I'd understand what you're talking about. You're right. I, like, it's cool, man. Like, it's that's super cool. I just feel like you should be talking to somebody way more in tune with what I'm Elon, looking at. Like I Elon Musk. Or understanding it. Yeah. yeah. It ain't me. There's somebody in Silicon Valley. Somebody in Google. I'm like, I'm like yo, <coughs> is Biombo going off because they ain't got no Walker Kessler? Yeah, right. Biombo, Biombo getting a double double tonight. Cool stories, that's for sure. And it was, I, I don't know what I expected. Well, <laughs> that, obviously that, did that, not you, do you're enough. Right. All timer. It's an all timer. <laughs> Unforgettable. Un. There's a lot of times where you'll say to me, you'll be like, "You remember when we had so and so on?" And I'm like, "No, no, I don't remember that." I promise you. 
till the end, till my dying day. I will never forget how I felt in the moment where he looked at me and he said, what's one times one? <laughs> uh, what's happening? What are we doing? And then he has us do a calculator. Oh, well, yeah. I don't even know what the hell I was doing on the calculator. I, I don't. I don't. He <laughs> rattled off twenty digits in a row. We were looking at our calculator. Yeah, he knew the whole thing. The I was whole like, thing. Huh. Um. I didn't understand any of it. No. I'm just pressing buttons. I didn't even know you could turn the phone sideways <laughs> and see that other stuff. <laughs> I didn't even know that existed. What are these? He said, yeah, and then I hit it. And he goes, no, nah, you pressed the wrong one. I've never even like, accidentally even turned what... my phone sideways on the calculator like app. I've never even done that before. <laughs> I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know how sometimes you're on your phone and it just accidentally like changes the view and it turns sideways or whatever like that? It's never happened before with me on the calculator app. I didn't even know that part existed of it. He was going to show me the video of all the drone stuff, whatever. Yeah, we were seeing yeah, some of it. No, but you, before you walked over, he couldn't get the phone. He, like, turned it sideways, and he's like, I can't get this thing off, whatever. He's trying to figure out, you know, how you do, yeah, like, right, right, YouTube right. or whatever, and it goes to the widescreen right, or whatever. Right. And he's like, oh. He's like, now you guys see. Uh, and then he was like, that's just some." Paris Hilton video and I was like what <laughs> <laughs> oh, also dude the story of, I was like, of driving down Sunset in the cat or that? whatever picking up four chicks who were just and eating we at a restaurant and we and lived art. together for a month <laughs> they're like finger paintings <laughs> In the same hotel? I'm like, is this real? Is he screwing with us? First of all, what like, <laughs> what, what kind of hotel? He said his hotel room had four bedrooms to it. I'm like, that's not a hotel room. That's like a house. <laughs> he says where John Belushi died. Yeah. The Chateau Marmont. I've heard of that place. Probably because that's where John Belushi died. I didn't want to get into the details of this, but I'm like, hold on. Four girls that you picked up on the side of the street who are exotic models. Like, I probably should have dove deeper into that story. But I, I don't know. We just, I think we had gone someplace else immediately. But there's so much more I want to know about that for sure. That might be a regret. We'll get him on next time he comes in town. Oh, I yeah. promise that, you, if I ever hear he's back in town, he's coming in here. Yeah, that... A hundred percent. I'll book him every time. He said there's four exotic models. And he said, and then we left. And then we ended up living together in this hotel for months. A, and, mo a month. And bought canvases and painted. Nothing weird was going on. We were just enjoying each other's... Huh? Okay. I mean, that's kind of cool. We live cool. different lives, brother. We live totally different lives. Hollywood's a different place, man. Different place. Grizzlies. Um, that, <laughs> go ahead. So that, that hotel, yeah, it's not only where John Belushi died, but... Uh, Music, either music videos or television shows. Anthony Bourdain filmed stuff there. Johnny Depp, Tim Burton, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Anthony Kiedis, Courtney Love. I mean, tons of famous people have done stuff there or then referenced it in music or filmed videos. Like, so it's, it's an insanely famous hotel. How much to, how much to go there tonight? Uh, the shit. I'm just looking at their... And four models. <laughs> I don't know. It's Let's see. inflation. Booking the Chateau inflation. Marmont. How much? Let's see how much it costs. How much for buy. a room? Uh, it's going to be a lot, probably. Do they even have a website? Yeah, they do. Okay. Reservations. They have a restaurant, too. How about that? Uh, you're looking at 500 a night. 500 or more a night. Oh, that's less than what I thought. You're looking today, 800. Tomorrow, uh, 950. Yeesh. If you book far enough out, yeah. you can book for, I mean, you can go stay there. Get a better Christmas. deal. Yeah, yeah. You book far enough out and you can get a better deal. Yeah. It's about, if 
you book far out, you can get 500 to 600 a night. Anything after that, if it's close to it, it's going to be 800 and above. Right. And that's just your basic room. I don't know about the room that has four bedrooms in it. Who's putting you up there for a month either? And he said he made twelve grand on Hustle and Flow, and that and he, this is happening before he got that. Yeah, I'm just so all right. I'm confused. Utah is in town. They're playing against the Grizzlies tonight at FedEx Forum. Of course, different court in season tournament. Uh, they're looking to end their five game road losing streak. Um, they have not won a game on the road. Uh, they are two and seven. Their two uh, wins are obviously home wins, one of which was an absolute drubbing of the uh, of the Grizzlies where they were up like 70-something to 30-something. Uh, the Walker Kessler thing was an elbow, and he was out for their last game against Indiana. Yeah. Hopefully – he won't be uh, – hopefully he'll be unavailable tonight because um, the Grizzlies are certainly still down some guys. Uh, at the beginning of the show, we talked about how you went to bed very early. Last night I was recording with, uh, with Kevin O'Connor, an episode of The Mismatch, and we talked about a bunch of different things. We talked about, you know, Adam Silver's comments on the media. We talked about in-season tournament, and then we played our game uh, that we play on that show. But anyways, you were saying that – you had already listened to it, and you had a couple thoughts. Let me hear it. Yeah, I don't think I uh, – I, I found the, the media conversation, how like Adam Silver saying he wishes – NBA coverage. NBA he said this coverage. on J.J. Reddick's pod. Yeah, that NBA coverage could be more like the NFL. And I don't know how you – I think I think where Adam's – I mean, I, I understand why he's saying that, I guess. I think what's where it's just different is – like, I don't think any of these leagues should ever compare themselves to the NFL, do any kind of comp to the NFL, because it's just such a different monster. Like, it's it's Godzilla, King Kong, and one. Like, you're not, like, it's, I think y'all's points on the fantasy was 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 very, uh, was, was. Well, so one of the things I said was yeah. the, the way that they have the advantage of the fantasy thing. In, and, and the example I brought up was that William, and this is true to life, he had come into me and he said, should I start Cole Komet tonight, or should I wait and start Evan Ingram? Evan Ingram's playing against the 49ers. Komet's in this game tonight yeah, right. against the Panthers. My, my, my son has absolutely no interest in the Bears or the Jaguars, yeah. except for the fact that they, he's got that guy on his fantasy team. Yes. Therefore, he not only will watch the game, he cares about the outcome just to see if Cole Komet gets a touchdown. Yes, fa- fantasy, if, yes. And that's just not – you don't have that kind of interest in the NBA. No, you don't with fantasy at all. I do think – Gambling would be the trick. I do think – you know, we're dead on that the, the NBA probably definitely played a role in Jeff Van Gundy not being doing the finals anymore. Oh, P.S. When I was talking about the gambling thing, and it's already starting – so a guy, uh, I, I said there's a casino, or not a casino, a, yeah, a sports book inside Washington. Yeah. A guy has already tweeted me and said there are kiosks in Phoenix. Yeah, F- Phoenix has them. Where you can them. bet. Well, because their they're arena's named after. Walking right? stick or yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. uh, talking stick. Yeah. Talking stick. But they can, uh, But they there are kiosks where you can bet. And the other night at the Grizzlies game, I actually saw it was either on Instagram or TikTok, uh, either an Instagram reel or a TikTok video. Uh, there's a guy on the front row. He filmed a video on the yeah. front row. Did you see this? Live betting Jimmy Butler. Yeah, and he said to Jimmy Butler, "Yeah, Jimmy, I need you to make the three. I've got you over 20. Come on, man. i got to be able to pay for this house. You know, i got to be able to pay my mortgage, just, whatever. Yeah. Jimmy Butler said, I paid for my house in cash. Yeah, stunting Jimmy Butler. Yeah, that was a pretty good line. Stunting Jimmy Butler. Um, the media thing, I, I do think, like, I don't know. I do feel like there is, the NBA is the only of the professional sports that puts down, that were like past players put down current players, current players put down past players. Like, you don't ever hear Joe Burrow or Lamar Jackson 
say Dan Marino and Joe Montana couldn't play in this era. <laughs> they never, you never will hear those guys say that. Oh, that's that. interesting. You will never I hear. I didn't even th- think about that. Yeah, you will never hear them say that. You will hear Shaquille O'Neal or Charles Barkley or uh, Kendrick Perkins or Kevin Garnett or who. You will hear them say that these guys. You think there's more haters in basketball media? I think media. there's way more haters in basketball media. I think there's way more haters with basketball fans. Um just gen- just generally NBA fans, you search NBA Twitter and NFL Twitter. I think Twitter you're probably right about there's... this. It's a culture thing that is a little bit different yes. in covering that. And I will say that uh, in, in or in the conversations around that, yeah. because it is like that's not as good as Jordan. Yeah. Now we you could you could be responsible I'm guilty for this. Of the, be... I'm guilty of that too. Yes. Right. Whereas. Shohei Otani is doing what he's doing, and there's not some guy going, he ain't Mickey Mantle. Right. <laughs> you know nope. I mean? Right? Yeah. Like, it, there's not the same kind no. of. Nobody is saying, no, you never hear anybody get on NFL Network or uh, the NFL on CBS or Fox or Monday Night Football and say, the Vikings are on. And Justin Jefferson does something crazy. Or Jamar Chase, the Bengals are playing. Jamar Chase freaking runs a deep route, catches it, touchdown. And he's got 102 yards and two touchdowns tonight. And nobody ever says, Jerry Rice couldn't do that in today's game. Jerry Rice wouldn't be able to do that. You well, know, and, like, even, and even with that, like, the Brady thing was never like a fight. There was no. never like a constant debate point. Yeah. At some point, right. it became. It was for a little while, and Not, then, but then, well, he kept winning Super. Bowl, and at some point, it's just undeniable. It's like, okay, this guy's the best quarterback ever. He's the best player ever. Like at some point, it's. And the Patriots, by the way, have sucked without him completely. So it's like, uh, no. um, I thought the other thing on the target score. Yeah, so this for, those, where, that, for yeah. those that have not listened, I thought about this in-season tournament thing a lot, and they have a game going on tonight, the Grizzlies do, in this in-season tournament. I am of the opinion that it, I've talked a lot about stakes, that they need to have stakes for this kind of stuff that the fans care about. Um, in the absence of that, you are telling me it is different by the clothes you wear. You are telling me it is different by the court you are playing on. You're telling me it's different because they have this cup that I am supposed to care about and whether or not my team wins it or not for some reason. Um, All fine, but I do think eventually there needs to be stakes that an average fan would care about. In the absence of that, I would prefer that you make it special by making the games actually different. And so I proposed having an Elam ending, a target score. And you just decide, like, okay, here's the average score in an NBA game. Say it's 120. We're going to play to 110. We're going to play 115. Whatever you want to play to, right? And that's going to be the target score. And I said, it's a perfect example tonight. I'm going to go to the Grizzlies and the Jazz. If the Grizzlies and the Jazz were playing to a target score, it would be infinitely more interesting to me. It just would. Yeah. It just would. Because it's different. Yes. It's different than the 82 games that I watch throughout the year. I would go extreme with it to the next level. I think every NBA game should be that. Now, I don't think they but would do it. But then at that it. point, see, then that wouldn't be different. No, I know. You know what I mean? I think they should do that, period, though. But they will never do it because like of records and things like that. To, I like overtime being to 10. I think every NBA game should be played to 110. Mm. You have four quarters. Yeah. If you don't hit the 110 in the four quarters, well, then you keep playing until somebody hits 110. But you play to 110. Whatever. I mean, I, I don't. I, I think that anything that you do over and over again, and that's going to screw up stats too. It will. That's right? why it'll never be done. What, but but just for something like this, yeah. I think there's only X number of games that you're playing like this, and so make the game different. Yeah. You want to have a four point line? You want to have like just something different? What is different about this besides the fact that you are playing on a different court and wearing different clothes? Yes. Why is it different? No, I'm with you. You're saying because it's for the cup. Okay. Great. Why do I care? Why do I care about the cup? Oh, you will. Bro, ain't nobody want to raise a banner for an in-season tournament champion. We're not raising a banner for that. Right. 
Eventually, we'll put a pin it out front of the forum line. We'll have a, we'll have a pin it. Yeah, there's some, and then look, eventually they're going to come up with real stakes will. that fans will care about. They will. Right? They will eventually. In the absence of that, that's what I'm a fan of. I, I, I think one more thing on the media that I, I didn't uh, get to, like, by far the best NBA show, it's inside the NBA. You mentioned that. I think ESPN has done too much to try to recreate that, and you can't recreate that. When the, all the characters that they try to bring in on their pregame, halftime, postgame, you can't re- – they have tried to re- re- like try to replicate that, and you cannot do it. Like, you can't do it. One, you can't do it because you don't have Barkley and you don't have Ernie Johnson. Like, you can't do that. So, it's just it's, – it's not possible there. Um, yeah. And people always say they want granular, but they don't. No. I don't. No. X's and O's. No, they they, they don't. don't. People get no. There, that is. I w- I will say the that's o- the super fan. The other thing too Your is casual that- fan is not sitting there going, "Why is this happening? Why is this? What kind of?" And and stop acting like we. It, it, like I mean, that was the other thing. It's not like everybody sits there and knows. Oh, the uh, the reason that that they got that pick is because uh, he didn't he didn't recognize that they were playing cover too. Or because this nickel moved over, where typically he blitzes from this, but instead he didn't blitz from this. He actually yeah. dropped back into coverage. It's like, like come on. Um, I would say the other, the one of the other things too, and I don't know. Look, I don't think because again, the NFL is a totally different animal. It just is. We went through it last week. Forty-eight of the most fifty watch things on television this year. Or NFL games. Like, yeah, but that's I, just but, what you're I, dealing I, but, with but there. But I do think he is right in terms of the biggest topic in the NFL is the games. Yes, it is. It is the games. Um, and the drama I, is the biggest topic then, in the I, NBA I will all s- too often. Yes. No, 100% right. I will say um, <laughs> we work, we've worked in the NBA. NBA TV is terrible. Mm. The NFL network is unbelievable it is so good yeah like i watch i watch good morning football if i'm up at six i watch good morning football at least for an hour every morning i always watch it I it think needs the, to be a better product the There's show's no amazing question. you all you got me on to the uh their pregame show really with michael good. irvin and kurt warner and yeah. mary uchi and rich eisen good it is so good and funny and it's funny, yeah. yeah. They got bits. They, they play do. games. They the play. Pictionary yep. stuff. Like, dude, good. it is. Yeah, like, and there's every time I turn on NBA TV, I'm like, all right, I'm bored. Or yeah. like, when does the game start? Because I'm bored. Yeah. Games that are coming up this weekend. All right. Uh, so obviously, the Terrence Howard thing changed our Friday show dramatically in way more ways than we would have ever yes. expected. Um, Michigan Penn State is the big one that is at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Um, I kind of just, I, I hope, I've always liked James Franklin, and I know his disgusting record against great teams. I always kind of root for guys to get off the schneid and, like, have that. It would be kind of crazy, especially when he lost to Ohio State, and it's like, same old James Franklin, can't beat anybody in the top ten, can't beat Michigan, yeah. Ohio State. Like, if he, if he was able to pull this off, and they are at Penn State, and they do have a great defense. And so th- this is, like, I feel like all year, uh, dude, Michigan has not played anyone. No, they haven't. Like, we're nine games in. You remember, like, it was forever. But then Washington played Oregon. Like, it took but a long time. Yeah. But it was like, we've seen them. And that was like three weeks ago was, now. The thing is, we knew at the beginning of the season, if you looked at Michigan's schedule, you knew it's going to be, okay, they play Penn State, they play Ohio State. That's it. It's wild, though, to be yeah. nine games into the season. And yeah. it's like, I don't if they I don't have out, a super strong no, opinion on it because no. I don't know. I know what they look like against rat teams. Yes. And they kick the hell out of them. But, like, I don't know what they look like it against is, somebody else that's got a bunch of athletes. It is impressive if you've never if another team hasn't even gotten first and goal on you. It doesn't Bro, matter. There if you're playing is a game teams. in ridiculous. that league where the over under is twenty eight. I know. Shut up. But yeah, but it is Iowa. not impressive when there's a over under that is twenty eight points. Yeah, it's Iowa and Rutgers, which they haven't. I don't think they played Iowa. They played Rutgers though. They did play Rutgers. Um, 
It happened last week too, Roser, with oh, yeah, Northwestern. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Won. It, I, I, I like the under this week too. Those teams one. stink. No, they do. Um, if they do beat the crap out of Penn State, which I don't, I don't think so. If it was in Ann Arbor, I would say they're going to beat the crap out of them. But the fact it's in Happy Valley, that Penn State defense is freaking good. They didn't get run out by Ohio State. They had a chance. They no, did. Ohio State has, or Michigan has a better quarterback. McCarthy's better than McCord. Um, His stats are not gaudy, though. No, no, they don't ask him to. They run the ball a ton. I but he, he's better than McCord is. Ugh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what to think about it either. White like, running I, back. Yeah, I'd totally just stay away from it. But yep. uh, Alabama's playing against Kentucky. Man, eh, we already saw. Oh, it is. If it's Alabama, a letdown. It's a if, letdown. If Alabama wins and Georgia beats Ole Miss, it's clinched. It's Georgia Bama in the SEC title. That clinches it. It does clinch it? It clinches it, yeah. Oh, wow. Because Alabama only has one conference game left. LSU will have two conference losses. Ole Miss will have two conference losses. The West is, yeah. You got Florida State. They've just got to not slip up. And this Miami game looked yeah. like it was going to be awesome at the beginning of the season. Obviously, not nearly uh, that now. Um, I'd be really careful if I was Washington against Utah. I would. I know that Jessica was in here with us and saying, but like, just feels like one of those, like that Utah team feels like they end up nine and three, 10 and three, yeah. you know, at the end of the year. And it's like, they are, they're tough. They're physical. And that Oregon and, team matched, or th- that Oregon team can play physical, actually. Oregon has a team right. that plays, and that's why they're able to kill Utah. But Washington is not some physical juggernaut. Well, and obviously our opinion got shaded by Utah getting just, trounced like they did against Oregon where they couldn't do anything. And so we're going to find out is Washington more around that like USC level, right? Cause that was like a 34, 32 game or are they more like, is it Washington and Oregon? And then there's everybody else is playing like underneath them. Cause Oregon killed them. Yeah. At their place. Yes. And so, you know, if you're doing the whole, and, and obviously Oregon and Washington played again. I mean, that thing was, that was probably the best game of the season. Most entertaining game yeah, of the season, right? Thus yeah. far. Um, you know, we had to do those picks for here. I don't have a real strong interest, but I, I kind of feel like Tennessee's going to get Missouri. Don't you? Yes. I Especially if the burden yeah. kid doesn't play. Yeah, I just don't. Uh, that would have been a Vinny Verno pick, I think, just because they beat him by 40 last I, year. I think it's also like 40 freaking points. I think it's also tough coming back from – they were up for that Missouri or for that Georgia game, and that's a tough back-to-back if you're them. Now, I would say Tennessee has Georgia next week. What are you thinking on Georgia Ole Miss? You think, think Georgia's, Georgia's going to pound gonna, them? them? Yeah. Yeah. But I thought Georgia was going to pound Missouri, and they didn't. They didn't. But maybe Missouri, like when you look at them last year against Georgia and this year against Georgia, maybe they're just a team that plays them tough and knows how to play them. Yeah. You know, but I – yeah. I, I watched a lot of that Ole Miss A&M game last and week, Ole and Miss, I'm not – bro, no. The fact that Ole Miss gave up 35 points, and it should have been 42 to I that know. A&M. Dude, Max Johnson is terrible. Uh, like, it, that, yeah. that end zone pick was abominable. Horrible. Like, I'm like, uh, And it's 6 o'clock at Athens. Georgia. Last time. Man, you pick, might get run out. Yeah, because the last time I think uh, there was a spot like this in this season for Georgia, and I, I took Georgia in this one. Everybody's like, oh, that's a big line. When they were like 15-point home favorites over Kentucky, and they just thrashed them. Like, and their offense, Ole Miss offense can be like super explosive, but they didn't do Dick against Bama. Nothing. Score Nothing. 10 points. I know. That's what I worry about. It's like, you going to score against Georgia? Like, how many? How many are you scoring? Right. With What's the max I could see you scoring? What's the most they've given up to anyone? Georgia. Maybe Missouri last week. I'm not kidding. Is that the most? It is. 21. That's the most point most they've given up this season? Yes. They gave up 21 to them, and they gave up 21 to Trent Dilbert's UAB team. They gave up 20 to yeah. Auburn, 20 to Vandy, 20 to Florida. Okay, so you're getting 21. Do I think Georgia's scoring in the 40s? Yes. <laughs> Hell, do I think they're scoring? Okay, so if Ole Miss gets 21, do I think Georgia is going to score 32? So you're betting it. Yeah, I'd take Georgia. Side on team. Easy. I'd take Georgia. 
All right. Uh, LSU, Florida, man. USC, Oregon could have been so much better. I mean, look, if I'm up really late, I'll still have it yeah, on. Yeah, right, right. And then uh, Memphis has got to go out and play the shirtless wonder look, or the I, sleeveless wonder. I'm sorry. It's weird to me the total is 52 or it was earlier this week. Memphis has only had one game this season that has not where there have not been 52 combined points in it, and it was the Arkansas State game, and they won 37 to three. Jeez. Um, every other game has hit 52 or cruised way above it. Um, I'll give everybody the uh, I'll give everybody the Brian Edwards picks because uh, we missed him today. Yeah, we got a do we have a graphic for that? Yeah, he yeah, took all right. He, he likes Bama minus 10 over Kentucky. He likes Boston College plus one and a half against VTech. I like that one too. I like yeah. I like Boston College. Virginia Tech's horrible. Uh, Oregon team total over forty four and a half against USC. You can make a living betting team totals against USC. <laughs> um, USC uh, Oregon over seventy three and a half. I think that's gone up to like seventy six or yeah. seventy five at some places. So he likes Kansas against Texas Tech. Houston against Cincinnati. And then the Florida LSU over 63. LSU plays overs, too. They don't stop anybody. Yeah. They don't stop anybody. So, he likes Bama, Boston College, Houston, and Kansas. And then he likes Oregon's team total over, Oregon USC over, and uh, LSU Florida over. So, if you're looking for picks this weekend and you like any of those, you can run with uh, – Brian Edwards on those. Who does uh who do the 49ers play? At Jacksonville. Oh. No Trent Williams. At least I don't think so. No Trent Williams. Yeah, he's not coming back. Oh. I it's still it's still the ankle. Um and we maybe we may be down another offensive lineman too. So Devo Samuel will be back. What's the uh But if we can't run the ball, what's the line on it? 49ers minus three. Oh. It's gone two and it was two and a half. It got bet up to three. I don't know. I don't know why teams. I for both teams coming off a bye. Like I don't know. Mm-hmm. We can't stop the run. We can't stop the pass. We can't run the ball. It's an early game. Early game. Oh wow! Yeah. Playing at noon. I think we've been in Jackson. I think we've we've been in Jacksonville all week or been in that area all week. So I was I reading this morning. I think there. the Cowboys are the. Uh, they say the biggest favorite. Yeah, sixteen isn't in this it? year. Who is it? the Giants? That's crazy though. The Giants. Sixteen and a half. I know they beat the crap out of bad teams, but you beat the crap out of the Giants on opening night. I get it, but sixteen and a half against a division. Devito. That doesn't make much sense to me. That's. I mean, that is a lot, man. I think the That's Giants a lot. are probably mailing it in. Huh? I think the Giants are probably mailing it in. They were well, maybe. I mean, they don't. And and well, they have Tommy DeVito. Yeah. Uh, but they don't have uh, no Daniel Jones, no Darren Waller. They don't have any of those. But they. Uh, I, I I will say this on, on the Cowboys on their front. A they're amazing bullies. Since the whole Dak Prescott era, we kill everybody that is 500 or under. And then it's every once in a while I'll get a win against a winning team, but more often than not, don't win those. And they also do really well, usually coming off of a loss. In fact, I read this morning they've had, um, since Dak Prescott has been uh, with the Cowboys, they are 13 and two against the spread after a loss, including nine straight spread wins. Woo! So they do bounce back. They bounce back after they lose a game. Yeah. But and man, if they want to feel good about themselves, that's the team to play against. I just don't like the division. I mean, it is a team that you see twice every year, yeah. right? And that you killed the first time around. That's just so high. NFL yeah. 16 and a half is so extreme. God, how bad are the Giants? They are terrible. Um, That'd be pathetic for they, people to, for that line to not have changed. You know? yeah, and they may have quit too at this point. All right, I'm gonna go look up linchpin tangential flight. Yeah. Um, uh, tcotlc dot com. That's the website. You can. Hey, are you? Uh, if people are gonna be at the house tonight, oh, Memphis basketball is tonight as well. Yeah, they play at eight. Missouri. On the, uh, yeah, it's the SEC Network. Okay, what's y'all's game on? GLeague.com. 
GLeague.com? Yeah, we are next. The next. Uh, our, uh, we're, we're on G League for. Why don't they just put every game on the G League app? Well, if you're asking me why the G League doesn't do certain things, I have no answer for you. I don't know why they do a lot of the things they do. I mean, you're saying this to me? Who gets asked about Pally? The app? <laughs> like, I, we don't know why certain apps don't do things. <laughs> what look, do I look like, App Man? Maybe we get Terrence Tower back in here and he'll explain to us how it all works. Fix, it all. <laughs> fix the apps. He can have that thing working tonight. Yeah. <laughs> he can have us watching all three games on the same screen. <laughs> We could be watching the Tiger game, the Grizzly game, and the Hustle game. <laughs> we have them all going. Tangent flight, or t- what is it? Tangential. Tangential I flight. Think. Yeah, I don't know. All right, thanks to Terrence Howard. Gravity is an effect, not a cause. Thanks to John <laughs> Roser. Everybody have a wonderful and safe weekend. We'll be back on Monday. Until then, we go. gone.